You're listening to Sister Stargazers, celestial and terrestrial observations and advice from two real-life sisters. Hello, fellow stargazers. Your sisters are in the house. Hi, Jude. Hey, everybody. Hi, Sarah. How are you? I'm doing all right. How are you doing? Good. We're looking at the new moon. Yes, the new moon at the end of May. This is episode 38. We're looking at Sunday, May 29th through Saturday, June 4th. This new moon and continuing eclipse energy. So I'm not, I don't even know where to start. Where do you want to start? (laughs) (laughs) Well, folks might be feeling the turmoil and the shuffling that's been happening between the end of April and the end of May here with the eclipses happening starting the end of April on the 30th and then two weeks later on the 16th and now kind of closing out the eclipse season, just integrating all of what has been decided. What are the next steps? And that's kind of what the new moon is saying. Yeah. It's in Gemini. It's a mutable air sign. Yeah. Gemini is all about communication. It's consistently curious. It wants to find out. It wants to learn. It's always interested in discovering new things. It rules the mind. And Mercury rules Gemini. Mm. And what's interesting about this particular lunation is that Mercury has traveled back in retrograde, apparent retrograde motion, back to 26 Taurus, where the last eclipse was. That's right. So you might be hearing echoes of any decisions or conversations that were held at that time two weeks ago. Now we're starting to move toward the consequences of of that decision or, or decisions. Right. But the sun and the moon are in Gemini, also the sign of in the tarot deck, in the traditional rider weight tarot deck, Gemini is the lovers. The lovers card rules Gemini, and it's this beautiful picture of two lovers standing under an angel, with the sun in the background. And there's also the key word with that card of choice. Mm. So we have before us some choice to make. You know, which path do we want to go down? Which which path is opening up for us? Which choice are we going to go with? And there might be a couple of choices. And there might be, you know, a lot of deliberation going on at the time of this new moon because, you know, Gemini is decision making. It's the mind kind of swirling things around and thinking things through. And what if this happened? What if that happened? What if I do this? What if I go this way? What if I do that? So there's a couple of things about this lunation that are really interesting. In the chart, we have Mars in Aries and has just made a conjunction to Jupiter, yeah, which is, you know, Mars is like in, in his home sign of Aries. Aries is, a, is the warrior, the warrior mentality, yeah. the, the warrior that's going to go out and do it, going to go yeah. get it, you know, going to hunt it down, whatever. It's, the, it's a very much of a warrior pursuer mentality. And right. with Jupiter right there, Jupiter is just like the bellows that's puffing onto the fire of Mars. And, you know, internally, we can use that energy to move forward. But because the sun and the moon are in Gemini, and because Gemini is such a distractible sign, you know, it's it's a little bit of this over here, it's a little bit of that over there, it's, oh, well, there's, yeah. there's flashy lights over on this side, and there's like cool breeze over there. I mean, it's a very curious, intellectually curious, inquisitive sign. If it's about thought, just think how fast your thoughts change and how, you know, distracting your thoughts can be. So I can only imagine, yes, thoughts are kind of all over the place. Meanwhile, Jupiter's magnifying this Martian self energy. Yeah. And in making a sextile, Mars and Jupiter are making a sextile to the sun and the moon. The mentality is you're encouraged to make a choice and make it now. Yep. You know, get on with things. But the reality is, no, not so fast. (laughs) Yeah. You don't have to do that. And the sun and the moon, you know, sextiling Jupiter and Mars. There's a lot of consideration 
to make or go or do and create an action. But I would encourage everybody, because Mercury is retrograde, and going back to that point of the eclipse, that 26 degrees Taurus, which is trining Pluto in Capricorn, it's just saying, just slow it down enough so that you can you can let in some of the stuff that you want to disregard, mm. that you're not even thinking about, that is perhaps hidden, or maybe it's revealed, and that will change your decision. Yep. But you've got to slow down enough to look at it. That's the part that's going to be hard to do. Mm. There's uh, also a quintile from the sun and the moon to Neptune. So this gives you, if you tune into that kind of dreamy quality of this particular lunation, you will be able to, <laughs> in a very nebulous way, gather more information. So really going within will help to kind of focus you. Right. But it's counterintuitive. You, you're you kind of being able to move and to, to make a decision, to go somewhere, to do something. But really what has to happen is that quintile from Neptune is really increasing your sensitivity. It's increasing your creativity. It's helping you to dial into the subtle parts of what's calling you to your life. And it's also a balance. And you had mentioned when we spoke about this lunation, you pulled a card yeah. that talked about balance too, which I thought was just perfect. Oh, yeah. There was um, justice came out. And of course, justice is holding the balance and also a sword. And if the sword is considered thought or higher mind or whatever, being clear in your decision making, being clear in your thoughts and discernment, deliberation, you know, watching those scales. And I, you had mentioned in, that this was a point of, of integration, like everything that you're hearing, everything that you've been discussing, the decisions you've been making to allow them to integrate at this lunation without having to feel pressured to move forward into a decision. Yeah, we also talked about the star Aldebaran. This is very interesting. Yeah. So the sun and the moon are conjunct in Gemini at nine-ish degrees of Gemini. And there's a star in close conjunction as well, Aldebaran. And the influence of this star at this particular lunation is, is really interesting. Yeah, it's really pertinent. I've been looking at Brady's book of fixed stars, and that's by Bernadette Brady, who's just a master of all of the star lore. So she's done a fair amount of research with all of these hundreds of stars and their influence in various charts. So I'm going to just talk a little bit about her understanding of Aldebaran. Yes, please. So Aldebaran, the concept... Aldebaran is one of the great stars in the sky, one of the royal stars of Persia. And there were four royal stars of Persia, one in each corner of the sky, north, south, east, and west. And so Aldebaran was the watcher of the east, the great cornerstone marking the spring equinox. In this capacity, Aldebaran was the god Mithras, or Ahura Mazda, the slayer of the cosmic bull. Mithras was a great military god who gave victories to his followers, but only if they followed the strictest procedure in his worship. And now Debron is ruled by Mars. So this key, again, of this militaristic, gung-ho, charge kind of mentality, you know, take over the world, you know, mm. um, that's a component, another strong indicator of this nation, along with Mars and Jupiter in Aries. Yeah. This lunation is conjunct Aldebaran, which is governed by Mars. So there's a strong inclination to get on with things, to move forward. To push your own agenda. Could we say that? Yeah, absolutely. And with especially with Mars being in Aries and Jupiter being conjunct Mars in Aries, it could be you could make this lunation all about you and your needs and your your necessity to move forward. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it goes on to talk about. Mithras, the god of war, considered all exchanges as sacred and therefore oversaw the business of his followers, insisting on their honesty and purity. And so this is another point of, of meaning for this star is integration or integrity. Yep. So we can look at 
what's happened over the last month with this series of eclipses and the decisions and changes and beginnings and endings that it that they indicate and we can now look at okay how am i going to take what has happened whatever changes maybe they weren't your changes you know maybe they weren't your decisions maybe decisions were made for you right. that yeah. somehow ha- are now impacting your life yep. so how can you now you know move forward with things with a certain amount of integrity and that's what Aldebaran in the highest on the highest level so We've talked about multivalence before, where there's a manifestation of an influence can be on a low end of the scale. Yes. So you can, you know, take things over to the dark side, you know, and and there can be anger and pessimism, pessimism and depression and all that. Or you can take your decision, Gemini, your decision, you can take things up to a higher level and focus more towards love and justice and integrity and wisdom and acceptance. Yep. Okay. So this Royal star is all about integration and integrity. And I can give you a few examples as just from Bernadette Brady's book. Yes. She's talking about Abraham Lincoln. So she's looked at Abraham Lincoln's chart and she's seeing that the sun, that his sun was rising as Aldebaran, one of the great royal stars of Persia, was in the nadir. Aldebaran represents a ruler or person who is driven to function with strong integrity or a noble cause. So thinking about you know, what Abraham Lincoln did, what his life was best known for, you know, the abolition of slavery. So this is all about this integrity that this noble cause that he carried forward. What Brady is saying is that it's partly because Aldebaran gave him that strength of integrity. So at this new moon, Aldebaran can give us the strength of integrity to be in alignment with our deepest values. Yeah. Just as an example, if you're working for a pharmaceutical company, but you don't believe in antibiotics, you're studying herbalism on the side. (laughs) Out of integrity. integrity, right? Yeah, right. How can your actions align with your soul vision, with your deepest, truest heart mission? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And I know everyone could come up with an example, you know? Yeah. Well, it sounds like at this lunation is a time to maybe examine where in our life we could be out of integrity and shed a little light and raise raise that vibration to return to integrity or return to what it is we, we hold most dear, what, what it is we do want to bring forward and just take this time at this lunation to, oh gosh, that's an area of my life where I could bring more integrity. Yeah, absolutely, Sarah. Yeah, and we talked too about an airplane performing a nosedive. Which this was the Sabian symbol for this lunation, yeah. And, and we were like... What does it mean? <laughs> yeah, we were going back and forth about that. But but when we bring in the idea of Aldebaran yeah. and integrity... Okay, so let's back up. Yeah. So the Gemini 10 degrees, I'm looking at Dane Rudyard's An Astrological Mandala... So 10 degrees Gemini, which is the rounded up degree of where the moon, the new moon is on the 30th, we have an airplane performing a nosedive. And the keynote is a superior ability to challenge nature and play with danger. That was like, oof, that sounds terrible, yeah. right? Yeah, right. But he goes on to say, the controlled use of mental powers, Gemini, mm-hmm. With the controlled use of mental powers, man is able to challenge the most basic force in nature, gravitation. Why? Because he can. Yep. Man enjoys playing with it as a lion tamer with his violent animals. But what he challenges is within himself as well as outside. Yep. Gravitation is the universal binding force of the material world. By challenging it, man prepares himself to pierce beyond the physical and reach higher realms of existence. He may lose the struggle, but that prospect makes the effort more exciting. He might gain immortality. So this is a kind of a a mentality that is being described here is is kind of warlike. Yeah. Like you do it because you can. And, you know, that might be you might need to pull up on that 
like you would if you were yeah piloting a plane and you were going into a nosedive because you can yeah. <laughs> you might want to pull up on that and just right reconsider you know like yeah you want to maintain your integrity you you don't want to do something out of spite or yes out of revenge or out of a uh, lack of care or just to make drama you know, the drama of performing a nosedive. Oh, this is, watch what's going to happen when I perform this nosedive and watch all the drama that I'm going to stir up by being this particular way or pushing this particular agenda. Yep, I think that's a cautionary note. That seems very Mars, me energy, because I can. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I know we were talking like, what what is the advice for this lunation that we wanted to try to impart to the listeners this week? And it seems like caution with Mars and Jupiter. Pull up. Pull up. Yeah. And with Mercury retrograde conjunct the North Node, you don't have all the information yet. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to go so fast. Well, and it's interesting, the airplane too, like we're talking about Gemini air sign. And this airplane with the mental capacity, you also don't have to take this on in an actionable way. Like you could work through it with your thoughts. You can elevate with your thoughts. Yeah, I think that's a great point. You don't actually have to do it. Like you can just think it through. And it seems like at this lunation, it's a good time to maybe practice some psychic forgiveness or acts of kindness to any little thing we can do to elevate the vibration Because it seems like this is, there could be some low vibe energy at this lunation. Yeah, I I think it would be easy. I mean, it's very easy to walk out the door and become immediately destabilized. Yes. Because of the environment, the, you know, the level of everything that's going on. Fear, worry, anxiety. (laughs) Right, in our culture right now. I mean... And and the speeding up of things, right? We were coming off of this two years of just being restricted and everyone's like yeah i just would offer that they're you know just kind of yeah use this lunation we use the neptune energy to kind of just pull in a little bit and wait yeah because it's not everything is known yeah. right now especially with mercury retrograde awesome well thank you yes thank you sarah Starting June 6th, people will be able to tune in Monday nights to our weekly astrology call-in show on WMPG90.9.org. You can listen live wherever you are, 7 p.m. Eastern time, so you can get more of the Sister Stargazers. Yeah, we're very excited about this call-in show. We'll have more information coming on that soon. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Yep, connect at SisterStargazers.com, and we'll see you next week. Bye for now. Thanks for listening to Sister Stargazers. Let us know what worked for you this week. Find us on Facebook and post a comment at Sister Stargazers. 